Are you looking for a great way to get students to think mathematically and seek out patterns? Or would you like a fantastic lesson to teach odd and even numbers and get students to think inquisitively? Well, this video is for you. Conjectures. They're a mathematical hypothesis or an educated guess based on the information that you have at hand. Now maths is all about seeking out patterns and trying to make sense of these. But unfortunately, people's views of mathematics don't always align with this. In fact, quite often people think that maths is all about right and wrong answers or trying to remember a number of maths facts. Hi. My name's Tom Moore, and in this video, we are going to have a look at a great activity called Odds and Evens. And in fact, you actually can find a fantastic resource in the description as well, which will outline this activity for you. But let's have a look at it in a bit more detail, because we are going to get students to explore how Odds and Evens work, and also what happens when we add and subtract them. So let's check it out. Now, it's important to explore what Odd and Even numbers look like. Now in this model here, it demonstrates it quite clearly because we can see I've got the number seven, which we all know to be odd. Whereas if I bring in another one, well, that makes it eight and we know that to be even. Now it's worth showing the students a couple of these and getting them to actually have a think to themselves, what makes the numbers odd and what makes numbers even? That is, how can I tell by looking at the model what is odd and even? And once they come up with this, it'll be a really good insight into then the next part of the activity. That is, what happens when we add odd and even numbers or when we subtract them? At this point, I get the students to give me any two numbers. For example, three and six. And I model both of those numbers out, just like you can see here, in the same way that we did before. Now, with three, we know that that's an odd number. And with six, we know that it's an even number. And it's really important that you point this out to the students when you model these out. Now, if we add them together, of course, that is going to get me nine. And we can see when we pair them up that that is in fact an odd number. Let's do one more. Let's do four and two. Once again, we highlight to students that four is an even number, two is an even number, and when we join them together, we get six. It's worth giving the students just a couple of examples and then allowing them to play with it for a while so that they can go through and find any patterns that they might see. And if they do see patterns, encourage them to write down their conjectures. Now, while students go through and have a bit of a play around with it and try and look for the patterns themselves, it's really important that you have a walk around and notice what's going on within your class. Because you may notice that some students are actually starting to organize their thoughts in order to be able to see patterns that little bit easier. And that's a great opportunity to leverage those students to possibly share their thinking with other students in the class. But if they haven't done anything along these lines, then you can simply have something that you've already organized beforehand and share it with the students. For example, what you can see here. Now I've arranged a simple whiteboard into four categories. That is odd plus odd, even plus even, odd plus even, and even plus odd. And by drawing this up on a whiteboard for students and saying, well, you've gone through and explored a few of these, now maybe you can arrange those thoughts into each of the categories. That might actually help them to see more patterns. The key here though is, is to make sure that you give students the opportunity to struggle with it for five minutes before introducing this, so you're not introducing too much. It also helps them to recognize just the value in having a table. Whereas if you had just said, we're going to arrange our patterns in a table to start off with, well then that really takes that away from the students and they can't actually see the need for actually having one. Now this process obviously takes time and sometimes the temptation can be to want to tell students that an odd number plus an odd number is going to be an even number for example. But this actually robs students of the opportunity to find this out for themselves and in fact actually contributes to the whole idea that maths is all about remembering a number of maths facts. By getting students to go through and look for these patterns themselves, we'll develop a much deeper understanding of what it is that they're learning. The top tier of Bloom's taxonomy is create. And by getting students to go through and recognize patterns, that is analyze what they're doing, and then create their own mathematical conjectures, actually addresses this. And by doing this, it actually will form deeper neural pathways within the student's brain so that they're more likely to remember what it is that they're learning 
going into the future. Now remember, we have the lesson plan in the description. Also, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. My name's Tom Moore, we'll see you next time.